This is my very own daily driver, a 2009 BMW 328i xDrive finished in jet black with saddle brown interior. A middle of the road trim in a line of sporty luxury sedans known to many in the car communities as the staple of the sports car sedan. <music> I recently bought this car at a public auction in Philadelphia and as I mentioned in previous videos I pulled the hoovy on it. You can go and check out that video uh, by following the link below where I tell you everything that we found wrong with this car and how much it costs to fix it. In this video however I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the BMW 3 Series and show you some of my favorite features take it for a drive and then based on my very very costly experience with this car I will point out to you some of the things you should look for if you're planning on buying one. BMW or Berich Motoren Vorka, I'm sure I screwed that up, has a long history of making the ultimate driving machine or at least they proclaim. Whether you agree that statement is true or not BMW has made great cars throughout their history as a car manufacturer. Cars like the 1500, 2002, M1, and of course the M3. The dream to be able to drive one was passed on to the family man with the introduction of the 3 Series. And more specifically, with the four-door sedan. The first generation 3 Series chassis code E21 the successor to the 2002 was a two-door model introduced in Munich in 1975 and built until 1983. Since its reveal, the 3 Series delivered performance that was unmatched by its rivals, laying the groundwork for the success story the 3 Series has become. All launch models came equipped with a four-cylinder carbureted engine. An inline six-cylinder engine was later added in 1977. Power output was 75 and 143 horsepower, respectively. This car didn't arrive here in the US until 1977, and we are only good enough to get the 320i with the four-cylinder engine, not the six. The second generation 3 Series, chassis code E30, was introduced in 1982 as a two-door model, with a four-door model added later in 1983. We didn't get this car here in the States until 1983, but once we had it, it was built until 1993. Other variants were also offered, such as the convertible, bower top cabriolet, the Touring, and of course the infamous M3 in coupe and convertible versions. Power output ranged from 90 to 238 horsepower, depending on the model you choose. The M3 model gets the highest output, of course. By the way, if you or someone you know has an E30 M3 and would like for me to feature it on one of my videos, please let me know. The third generation 3 Series chassis code E36 was built from 1990 to 2000, but once again, it didn't make it to the US until 1991. This third generation 3 Series represented one of the most significant design advances in the history to date. The design language was more coupe oriented with distinct sloping A and C pillars. This generation also offered the most variants out of any generation up to date. Eight variants to be exact. BMW offered the E36 as a sedan, coupe, convertible, bower top, cabriolet, touring, compact, and the M3 as a sedan, coupe, and convertible. And who can forget about the 318 Ti hatchback. This was a new move for BMW in the 3 Series lineup, which I think prompted Mercedes-Benz to get on their game. Mercedes later replied with their C320 Sports Coupe hatchback. The fourth generation chassis code E46 was probably the most successful of the bunch, and with good reason. This model was built from 1997 to 2006, and power output ranged from 105 to 360 horsepower. 
Here in the US, the M3 was restricted to 333 horsepower out of the naturally aspirated inline six. That's 111 horsepower per liter. These were numbers at the time reserved for exotics and of course the Honda S2000. The fifth generation chassis code E90, or this one right here, also, what's up with the huge leap in the naming of the chassis code? I know, but you just wait, it gets a lot weirder. For the first time, BMW decided to design the coupe and the sedans separately. So the E90 was followed by the E91, the E92, and the E93. This model saw some firsts for the lineup with the introduction of the V8 for the M3 model. It was built from 2005 to 2013 and output range from 122 to 450 horsepower. The US model for the M3 was one again limited to 414 horsepower. Fun fact, remember how there were different chassis codes for the sedan and the coupe? Well, the M3 model is actually made up of the front section of the coupe and the rear section of the sedan. The sixth generation in 2012 brought on the F30, F31, and F34, with the M cars getting chassis code F80, F82, and F83. The seventh generation in 2018 brought in the G20. I'll give you more details on these cars in a future video. This particular model is a 2009 328 sedan with the X-Drive. It comes equipped with a three liter inline six cylinder engine producing 230 horsepower and 200 pounds foot of torque. A modest amount of power for a daily driver, I think. Now, let's walk around and take a look at the interior where I'll show you some of my favorite features. Then we'll take it for a spin and I'll show you some of the things you should look for if you're planning on buying one. All right, the first favorite feature of mine that I want to show you is the iDrive system. I know a lot of people complain about the iDrive system in the BMWs, but I particularly like it. I haven't really had uh, too many issues, especially for an old system like this. It works pretty well. You have a knob right here in the center. Um, you know, it, it's well positioned for your arm. I'm able to reach all the different settings that I want. You have your navigation here. You have uh, radio, telephone, contacts. Uh, and one particular area that I really like is the vehicle information. You can get onboard information and it gives you details about consumption and your average speed and things like that. Then you can go to the trip computer and it does the same. It gives you distance, duration, and different things like that. The vehicle status is pretty interesting. It gives you uh, life details on your tire pressures. Uh, you can mo monitor your engine oil level. Wait, what? Yeah, that's, that's right. You can check your engine oil level right from in here. As a matter of fact, this car doesn't have an oil dipstick. Yeah, you heard that right. It doesn't have an oil dipstick. There is no way for you to check the oil. And if this system gets broken or the sensor doesn't work well, guess what? You're out of luck. Another interesting feature that I really like is this control right here. This little button actually allows you to switch from cold to hot in a matter of seconds. And I think it's a great feature. Some people don't like it, some people don't see the use for it, but I think it's, it's very, very useful. Imagine you're driving down the highway, you have your, your uh, temperature set properly, but all of a sudden, you come up against the sun. The sun starts to come in uh, head on and you start to get a little bit warmer. Well, you don't really want to change the temperature. You just want a little bit of cool air to keep you know, the temperature um, comfortable. Well, all you have to do is switch that knob or this little sliding thing. You just switch it to the left side to keep it cold as such. And voila, you start to get some cool air coming in. And lastly, let's talk about the interior design. I think this, this is a very classy, uh, very nice, sporty looking design that is aging pretty well. Uh, this car really, to me, doesn't look that old at all. 
obviously you have you know depending on the trim that you have uh, there's different options that you can opt for uh, carbon fiber finish here or wood finish but overall nice interior design very ergonomical the sitting position is is very good and I like how BMW clustered or segregated the dash in instruments the iDrive system with the navigation is in a different little area and I typically like when people design the interior in a way that you can actually separate the top of the dashboard with from the bottom because you know if you ever wanted to go racing and you wanted to remove all this crap out and install a roll cage well now you can So here we go for my favorite part of the video, the drive. Now one thing that I really like about these cars is how they drive. They are well engineered to keep uh, the driving dynamics uh, in mind. When BMW designs these cars, that's their ultimate goal, to make sure that when you drive them, that dynamically the car it's it's well behaved and that it responds well to your inputs and that it feels good to drive the feel of the car this one in particular being the X drive uh, you can you can tell that that you know it's all-wheel drive the system does a good job at you know maintaining that rear real drive uh, bias and then just engaging the front wheels as necessary it's, it will be the opposite of something like an Audi right which I like I, I like to feel you know like I'm driving a sports car and then when I need a little bit of traction that is there on the highway the car is nice and smooth controlled, well behaved which are all things that you want uh, out of a high performance car especially a sports car right braking on these cars is actually pretty good on the street I haven't had any track experience with these cars but at least on the street it's very good pedal feel feels very consistent smooth but grippy at the same time which is what you want now what's interesting about these uh, three series is that no matter which one you get, the coupe, the four door, they all have the same wheelbase. It's the same car, uh, basically with you know different amenities. I have four doors, you can have two doors, you can have convertible, but it's, it's basically the same car. These cars are actually very stable on the corners. I don't know how BMW does it because if you look at the sway bars in these cars, they are tiny. Uh, goes to show how well engineered the geometry of the suspension is and what a great value proposition this car is nowadays you know a, a neat 90 with high mileage like this one you can get from three to five thousand dollars very very cheap some are a little bit more expensive obviously depending on what options you get six ten thousand dollars but still at those numbers it's, it's a rather affordable option. And when you compare what you're getting with this car, this is actually a sports car. And you can have it as a four door. How convenient is that? This one in particular, the reason that I chose it is because it's, it's got the X drive. So if we have snow or anything, I don't have to worry about anything. I can drive it in pretty much any weather. Another thing that I wanted to highlight is how smooth the engine is. I mean, this engine, it is just really smooth. BMW, they tend to design their cars in a way where the engine, the power delivery is very smooth and it, and it keeps building up throughout the line. It's not peaky, it's, it's just nice and smooth. Obviously the engine with the inline six, it's just very smooth and it just, it's got a very smooth delivery line, power line. Another thing that I like is the steering feel. The steering wheel is nice. Uh, it could be a little bit uh, thicker, but it's, it's nice. It feels really good. 
I got uh, a good feel on the road be below me. I, 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 I can feel what's going on. The weight is adequate. Actually, I shouldn't call it adequate. It's, it's, actually, it's actually very good. Adequate is the wrong word. Um, I wish that at lower speeds, especially standing still, that I had more assistance uh, from the power steering. Uh, that way it's, it's easier to, you know, turn into, in, for instance, in a, in a parking lot where you don't really need it to be heavy. Uh, but, you know, once you get going, uh, it's pretty good. And just to complement, uh, you know, the smooth engine, the nice handling, the good feel coming out of the uh, steering wheel is the sitting position. Uh, this car actually has a very nice uh, sitting position, uh, very close to something like a Porsche, but you know, with a little bit more uh, comfort in mind. But it's still very nice. Uh, I, I like how I sit in in the cabin. It, it's you know, overall very nice. pumped and excited and ready to buy one of these. So allow me to highlight some of the things you should look for when buying one. I made a video to show you general things to look for when buying any car, like body shape, signs of wear, leaks, etc. The link is included below. Use that as your basis. But now let's dig into things to look for for this car specifically. Keep in mind that it's never a bad idea to bring along a car savvy friend who is familiar with these cars to help you look for things. If you find one that you have your heart set on, I would also recommend you get a PPI or pre-purchase inspection done by an experienced BMW shop or the dealership. It will be the best 200 bucks you spend on the car. Right, so now let's jump right into it. Now one thing to keep in mind is that these vehicles can be very expensive to repair. A lot of the work to be done actually requires specialized tooling to be able to perform the job, so keep that in mind. Also if you're looking for one of these, depending on what year you're looking for, it's probably going to be over 100,000 miles. If that's the case, and even if it wasn't the case, you want to make sure that you look into the maintenance of the vehicle. For this particular year, uh, you're probably gonna be over 100,000 miles. You wanna look into the spark plugs, where there's spark plugs replaced, for instance. Another thing uh, is the transmission oil. BMW recommends that you do not service the transmission. They say it's a lifetime uh, uh, non-serviceable item. I disagree, I think that you should replace the transmission fluid. Uh, and a lot of people see much better results when they do. If your transmission is acting a little bit funky, probably the oil needs to be replaced. But also you, keep, you have to keep in mind that these vehicles learn how you drive and sometimes the transmission computer has to be reset. If you're buying one with the X-Drive automatic, you wanna make sure that you look into the differential. The oil and uh, may need to be replaced there as well. The transfer case, if the oil is running too low, can cause some issues and feel different. Uh, when you drive them, so keep an eye out for that as well. After 100,000 miles, they start to you know leak oil, and if it goes too low, you can actually cause irreparable damage. You you may have to replace the unit. Another very important item and very costly that you want to look at is the oil pan gasket. You want to check for leaks around there. Look under the undercarriage very carefully, because if you have a leaky oil pan. Uh, what that means is to replace it, you might have to spend $1,200 to $2,000 to replace that gasket. Check into the water pump as well. Right around 100,000 miles is when the electronics uh, around the water pump start to fail. Typically the water pump itself is fine, it's the electronics, the sensors that actually fail and cause it to stop working. Also look into the coolant level when the temperature is cold, when the car is cold. Uh, you want to make sure that the coolant is like a pale blue color, not green. And another very, very costly item that you have to make sure you check is actually a gasket that's here 
uh, where, the, your, where, where your oil filter housing is. It's actually the same housing runs both oil and coolant. And what happens is you have a, a ring that goes inside that starts to deteriorate over the years and starts to leak. When you see that condition happening, you need to immediately replace that O-ring because if you don't, you run the risk of mixing coolant and oil and damaging your whole engine. Now, this is one of those typical German uh, engineering type of deals. Technically, it, it's a very smart idea. You think, I'm gonna cool the oil with the coolant at the same time. It is, it's a brilliant idea. The problem is, when things wear out, you have issues like this that can literally blow up your engine. You can lose an engine over this. I'm sure if you're familiar with these cars, uh, you've heard about the Vanos. Those uh, are good to, uh, it's, it's always good to clean those as well. Make sure that, you know, they're working properly. But, you know, right around this time, you may have to experience some issues with those as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you find this vi video very helpful. Give it a like. Give me some comments. Uh, if you know any things that we should be looking for uh, when buying these cars that I missed, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you on the next video.